All right, here we go with uh, three point, or sorry, 1.1, getting ahead of myself. So, section 1.1, solving equations. So to solve an equation, you need to isolate, which means to get alone, okay, the variable. Sometimes you may have to distribute or combine like items first. Solve each equation, find round the nearest hundredth when necessary. Okay, so we have 5x minus 3. Our goal is to get this x by itself. So we need to get rid of the 5 and the 3. We want to get rid of the 3 first. We try to get rid of everything furthest away from the x. Okay, so the 5, you see there's no symbol in between it. It's right up next to the x. The 3 is attached by subtraction, so we are going to add. Now remember, whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. Now these cancel, okay? When you do the opposite, you cancel it out. So that leaves us 5x, and that leaves us 25. Now at this point, the x has a 5, which is attached by multiplication. Remember, there's no symbol in between it. It's multiplication. So we're going to divide on both sides again. That gives us x equals 5. Now the beauty of algebra is you can plug this back in real quickly and run in your head. 5 times 5 is 25, minus 3 is 22, check. All right, now in this case, notice we have 7 y's, negative 3 y's, and positive 2 y's. We want to clean this up and get all the y's together. So 7 y's take away 3 y's is 4 y's, plus 2 is 9, sorry, I was getting ahead of myself, plus 2 is 6, 6y. Six now, what I was going to say was, you could also, some people like to add the positives together first, that would have given us 9y minus 3y, which gives us the same 6y. doesn't matter which order you do it, okay? You could even do negative 3 plus 2 and get negative 1, and 7 minus, six is, seven minus 1 is 6. Doesn't make any difference. Now we're just going to copy what's left. Now notice how this looks very similar to 5x minus 3. Only difference is the numbers are 6 and 4. All right? So again, we want to get rid of the 4. It's furthest away. If it helps you to put a little fence there, go ahead. Cancels. 6y equals 26 plus 4 is 30. Now, this is attached by multiplication, so we're going to divide both sides. y equals 5. Again, which would be a little bit more work, but I could plug it in here and get 35 minus 15, which is 20. 20 minus 4 is 16, plus 2 times 5 is 10. 16 plus 10 is 26. Check. All right, number 3. Again, I'm going to combine my like terms. Now notice this time I also have numbers. Now I like to use these grouping symbols. Doesn't matter what they are, you can use squiggly lines, curves, underlines. But I like to group my letters with one symbol and numbers with another to, to kind of reduce confusion. So three X's take away two X's is one X. You don't have to put the one, it's up to you. Two minus five is negative three. Or negative five plus two is negative three equals negative 3x plus 6, sorry, minus 6. Now, in this case, you have two choices. You can move your x's to the left side or the right side, your numbers to the right or left. It doesn't matter. I will say, if you think ahead, a lot of people like to keep their variables positive. And if we subtracted 1x to the right side, we'd have negative 4x. So, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. Notice how I put the x's underneath each other. Those cancel. And now I have my positive 4x minus 3 equals negative 6. Since I move my letters left, I'm going to move my numbers right. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides to cancel this. Which gives me 4x equals 3 minus 6, or negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. And now I'm going to divide by 4. So my answer is negative 3 fourths or 0.75. Same thing. Sorry, negative 0.75. All right, number four. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do this. 
and only there's a little shortcut here if you want to make your life easier. Okay. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute. I'm going to take the three times the x and three times the four. So three times x and three times four is twelve. The most common mistake in algebra happens right here when people write three x plus four and they forget to distribute. Now I'm going to multiply by negative one half. So first, remember you're multiplying by negative, so the 4 times negative, positive 4 times negative is going to be negative, and half of 4 is 2. And half of 12 is 6, but it's going to be minus. Okay? Now at this point, again, I'm going to group my letters and my numbers. So 3x take away 1x, sorry, 2x is 1x. 12 minus 6 is positive 6 and 21 is on the right side. Now all I do is subtract 6 from both sides, and I end up with x equals 15. Again, I could plug it in. It would be a little bit more work here, but I could plug it in and verify if 15 is my answer. Now real quickly, you don't have to write this down if you don't want to, but you can kind of see what I'm going to do here. I could actually get rid of this fraction by multiplying everything by 2. Okay. Now, when I do that, I can't multiply by what's in the parentheses, only what's outside the parentheses. So this would become 6x plus 4, negative 1, 4x plus 12, equals 42. Now, at this point, the problem is going to work exactly the same. I'm going to multiply and get a long sentence like this, join my like terms, and solve. Now, in this case, since both these numbers were even, it makes sense just to distribute the 1 half. But let's say we had 4x plus 11. Okay, that would have given us a negative 11 halves. Kind of a nasty number to deal with. Multiplying by 2 would solve that problem. So it's just an alternative, something to think about when you have a, you know, non-factorable number there. All right. So, to get rid of fractions, you can multiply each term in the equation by the least common denominator. All right? So, in this case, it's pretty simple. I want to get rid of that 3 by multiplying by 3. I do that to both sides. These three cancel. Now, another common mistake I see very often is... People cancel the 3, but then put 6x minus 12. You can't do that because the 3s are canceled, leaving you just 2x minus 4. And over here, we have negative 15. Now we're going to do what we've already done before. We're going to add 4 to both sides to get rid of that negative 4. We have 2x equals, careful here, negative 11. Okay, negative 15 plus positive 4 is negative 11. Then divide by 2. So I end up with negative 11 over 2, or negative 5.5, or negative 5.5. Doesn't really matter. All acceptable answers. Now, here on this next problem is where the least common denominator comes in. If we look at the 3 and the 7, we want to get rid of this. But if I multiply by 3, that won't help with the 7. If I multiply by 7, it won't help with the 3. So I need the common denominator of 3 and 7, and I want the least one, the smallest one. So if I count by 3s and count by 7s, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 7, I'm not going to any of those yet, 18, 21, bingo. There is my magic number. So I need to multiply this fraction by 21, this fraction by 21, and this side by 21. Now watch what happens. The 3 cancels into the 21 7 times. It divides into it 7 times. So what I'm left with is 7 times 2x. I want to put keep in parentheses I can. 7 goes into 21 3 times, so I'm left with plus 5 times 3. It doesn't matter which one's in parentheses. Equals 210. Just tack a 0 on there. Now I multiply. I have 14x plus 15 equals 210. So at this point, again, I want to get my x alone, so I'm going to subtract the 15. 
You can do this in your head even. If you subtracted 10, you'd be at 200. Take away five more, you have 195. Now we're going to divide by 14. Okay, so 195 divided by 14 is not a nice number, okay? So it's not a nice even number. All right, so it's going to be 13.92859. So if we think about our directions, it said round to the nearest hundredth. Well, that's this place right here. So the nine is going to tell the two to round up to 13.93. Just think about when you round to hundreds, it's like money. Okay, that second spot is your pennies, your change. Okay, so round to the last coin if you had money. All right, we're almost done. There are two unique situations with solving equations, and the variables cancel. If we get a number equal to a different number, okay, like 2 equals negative 10, there are no solutions. Okay. If we get the number equals a number, like 0 equals 0, 5 equals 5, that means there are infinite solutions. That means any number you plug in will work. So let's see what we have here. We have 3x minus 2x is x. 4 plus 7 is 11. You might even be able to see right now that the right side and left side are exactly the same. Okay? You could stop now and say infinite solutions. But let's say we got rid of our x. Now, this goes against the notes because it said if we have a, a well, no, 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 it doesn't. Never mind. I'll get to that. That gives me 11 equals 11. That's a true statement, which means all numbers, infinite. But let's say you got rid of 11 instead. It doesn't matter what you get rid of first. Sorry. Let's see a plus sign. It's okay. You can do this. If I subtracted 11 from both sides, I would end up with x equals x. Still a true statement. Still infinite solutions. So whether you get a letter equals a letter or a number equals a number, basically it comes down to if it's a true or false statement. That's what you're worried about. All right? You can kind of guess where this next one's going to go, but let's do it anyway. Now notice I have a 3 on the bottom. This is a 1 on the bottom and a 1 on the bottom here. I'm going to multiply everything by 3 because I want to get rid of my denominators. You'll learn I have troubles with threes. So that was canceled, leaving me 15x minus 2. Remember, I don't distribute anything. Plus 4 times 3, because there's nothing to cancel. There's a 1 on the bottom. 4 times 3 is 12. Equals 3 times 5 is 15x minus 21. All right. Well, here, I have 15x plus 10 equals 15x minus 21. You can kind of see where this is going. If I subtract 15x from both sides, I end up with a false statement. 10 equals negative 21. That is a false statement, so there are no solutions. And that's it.